like the classroom scheduling. And in this problem, we have classes that have to be scheduled. I don't know why they're so irregularly. Their, their starting times and ending times are so irregular, but OK. Um, you can think of your own application if it's not classrooms. This class, class I, starts at SI time and finishes at FI time. And unlike the other scheduling problem that we looked at, uh, we don't, the problem isn't to choose which intervals. We have to schedule all of them. All the classes have got to be scheduled, uh, but they, uh, each class has got to be put into a classroom. And you can't have two classes in the same classroom. So if you have three classes that have to be scheduled at the same point in time, this is time here, then you know you need at least three classes, three classrooms. Okay. Um, so we can define we define the depth d of the intervals to be the maximum. number of intervals that overlap at some single point in time. Some single point in time. So if you just look at this, I think it's well, depending on whether we think these two overlap or not, let's just extend that a bit to make it clear. Here's one, one, two, three, four, five. And that's, I, I think that's the most that overlap at any given point in time. And so D in this little example is equal to five. The depth equals five. And so clearly, you need at least D classrooms. Whatever the depth is, you need at least that many classrooms. So what we want to prove is that D is sufficient. OK. So clearly, D classrooms are necessary. I can't spell necessary, so I'll just say needed. OK. So D classrooms, at least, are needed. The question is, is D always enough? All right, so here's a little algorithm. Algorithm, we're going to sort the intervals, this time not by their finishing time, but by their starting time. OK, by the starting times. And then, um, Consider the intervals uh, in order, in, in that sorted order, which means um, first starting time first, and second starting time second, and so on, in that order. And um, give the interval. a label from, from 1 up through D, or actually some label 
from that set, 1 through D, provided the label is not used by any interval that overlaps Uh, consider the intervals uh, in order and give the interval, let me give it a name, interval i, some label from that set, provided that the label is not used by any interval that overlaps i, interval i. And if not possible, and, and quit if not possible. Okay, whew. These words are more complicated than the idea. The idea is really trivial. Let's just do it on this, on this little example. Now, we're getting too cluttered. Let me just make up a new example. Okay. So we're going to be sorting by, oh, this is too regular. Okay. Um, we're going to be sorting by starting times. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four. This is five, six, still too regular, seven, eight, nine. 10. No, it's 2. By regular, I mean that the, the, the start and the finish times seem to be sorted in the same order, and that's just. So this one is 9, 10, 11. OK. Seems a little better. All right, what is D in this case? Maybe I complicated my life too much here. Uh, if we look along here, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, no, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Not quite six there. It looks like D is equal to six. Anybody have better eyes than I do? Okay, so let's say D equals six. All right, and so what's the algorithm going to do? It considers the uh, intervals in order by starting time, and I've already labeled them by starting time. And it's going to give a label, which is the classroom label, to each of the intervals in order. When it encounters an interval i, it uses any label, classroom label, from 1 to d, as long as that label is not already being used, isn't currently being used, by some interval that overlaps interval i. Because if it is in use by some interval that overlaps interval i, you can't give them the same label because that's assigning two classes in the same classroom. That clearly won't work. So it's a very, um, it's a greedy algorithm in that sense. It's, it's, it's just looking at the, uh, the data as, it, as it's presented in a myopic way, making very local choices and never undoing any choice. So that, in that sense, it, it satisfies my informal definition of what a greedy algorithm is. However, it has sorted the data already. So in that sense, it's using some global look of, at the data. So that kind of contradicts the notion of a greedy algorithm. But it's got a greedy component to it. So it, um, our set of, of labels are 1 through 6. Now, I'm going to make things difficult conceptually for me, uh, hopefully not for you, because we're already using integers here for uh, uh, to number the intervals. Let me use letters for classrooms, OK? So we want six classrooms, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Six classrooms. OK, so I'm going to assign 
labels from the set A through F. So we take the first one, and according to the algorithm, what label should we give it? Some people say A. Okay? Did the algorithm say that? No, I'm, I'm just really being picky. The algorithm says you can pick any label as long as it's not in use. A is certainly natural. I, I'm not going <laughs> to argue with that, but instead I'll give it C. Okay. All right, so this is labeled C. The next one is 2. According to the algorithm, um, interval 2 can get any label other than C. You can't get a, a C, so obviously you give it E, right? Classroom E. Then the next one is three, and um, according to the algorithm, it can get any, it, because it's overlapping C and E, it can get any label other than C and E, and we'll give it A. All right? Then four, well, this is tedious. Four still overlaps uh, these three that we've looked at so far, so of course it gets B. And um, now we look at five. Wait a minute. Why didn't somebody stop me? <laughs> Four and five. These are mislabeled, right? Yeah. Okay, because this one actually starts before what I'm calling five. All right, so this one is B. All right, and now five. Um, Wait, what happened to that? <laughs> okay, examples are really hard uh, to get right. Six. Okay, so five, now um, it still, I guess, overlaps everything. Let's just say it overlaps everything. And so what can it get? I, I can't remember. We have A, B, C. Have we used D yet? All right, everybody getting the notion? I want to get to at least some point where the next thing happens. Six, um, six, uh, anyway. Six overlaps everything as well, and so A, B, C, D, whatever we used, I guess that's E. But finally, seven. Whew. What? Six should be what? Oh, F, okay, sorry. Finally, seven. Seven, what's available at that point? Anything, that it, it doesn't overlap. And it doesn't overlap B, and it doesn't overlap C. So it gets C, and so on. That's the algorithm. Except if you ever get to a place where you don't have enough you don't have enough labels, there isn't one still available, then you have to quit and say, I wasn't able to use just D classrooms. I needed more than D classrooms. Okay, so we're going to prove that D is sufficient by proving that this algorithm never fails, that this never happens. Okay, so we'll prove that D is enough just by saying this algorithm always ends up um, giving a, an actual classroom or a label to every one of the intervals. Okay, so oh, here's the algorithm. Uh, sorry. So here's our claim. The algorithm gives a label to every interval. So D labels or classrooms are sufficient. And sufficient is spelled E-N-O-U-G-H. Okay. Now, um, D label the classrooms are enough. Well, what's the proof of that? Suppose not. And this is the offending interval right there. That's the interval that we couldn't give a label to. 
Okay, why can't you give a label when the algorithm encounters that? Why can why why does the algorithm fail at that moment? You, you want to give it a label that isn't currently in use by any of the intervals that overlap it, and you have D labels available to you. Why would the algorithm fail at that moment? It's because yeah, there have to be D whatever the, there have to be D intervals that overlap with that point. But that means there's a point in time where there's D plus one, which means that the whole definition of D wasn't correct. D is supposed to be the maximum number of intervals that ever overlap at any given point in time. And yet we're saying at the place where this algorithm would fail, if it fails, it must fail because there's actually d plus 1, at least d plus 1 intervals that are crossing, uh, that intersect this point in time. And that contradicts the whole definition of d. So proof is done. And um, therefore, the algorithm works. Therefore, d is sufficient. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a cute algorithm and, and a nice way of proving that the uh, minimum number of classrooms that are needed is exactly equal to the depth, is actually equal, exactly equal to D.